then I want to. Can you have a I have no clue. I think you meant that. Okay, how can I tell if they can see me and they can see me? Um, that part. So it's kind of sharing my screen. Well, I came for open enrollment. 
for my like, first week of employment. Yes. I remember for the assessment and open enrollment, but my last lesson learned was essential oil. That was fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mostly liked it because it smelled so delicious in there. I want to drink that every time. <laughs> I don't know Yeah. Health and well being is very all in public. Today is more medical model. I think I'm going to get rolling. What do you think, Lexi? Should I get going? Yeah, oh, yeah you're good. Okay. I'll be right next to you. Thanks. Well, I need you to listen, Lexi. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Today's more medical model, right? We like to think of all a bunch of different things for health and well being. We did essential oils last time. We did a snack clinic a while ago. That one was a fun one. Today, we're going to talk about preventative screening. So hopefully, I can keep saying preventative as a fun side fact. <laughs> Preventive is actually the official term, but I feel like preventative makes more sense. Yeah. But I'm probably going to avoid saying preventative too often because it's a little bit of an adventure to say. So, anyway, we're going to be talking about your screenings today. <laughs> you each get handouts to take home with you so that you can remember what you need to be doing. But why should we be getting our screenings then? Let's see if this clicker wants to work. Yeah. All right, so big thing is early detection. So we can catch these diseases nice and early. When you catch them earlier, oftentimes you have more treatment options. Um, it also maybe lowers the cost. It makes them less invasive. Um, if you are catching things and if you're aware of what's going on within your body, hopefully that increases your own peace of mind and helps you feel like you're really on top of your own healthcare. So obviously a big thing too, a big motivator for me personally is improved quality of life. So if something is funky within my body, and usually something's kind of funky within my energy levels, my sleep, my pain, all of the above, right? So hopefully these preventative screenings will help minimize, minimal, minimize, minimalize. Which one do you think? Minimize? Minimize. 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 All right. Thank you, team. Uh, <laughs> It's like trying to write something on a chalkboard. You no longer know how to spell when it's like watching you, right? <laughs> so on the handouts, <clears throat> we've got our first group. So I'm going to go through all the ladies first, and then we'll go through the gentlemen. So for women in the age range of 20 to 39, here are all the different preventative screenings you should be doing with some type, type of regularity. So once a month, ideally, you're doing a breast self-exam. So everybody's breasts, everybody's parts are different. Finding your normal is the ideal, right? So understanding what is your normal. So different breast tissues will be more dense or less dense. Um, and just realizing what's normal for you and if you're having any major abrupt changes or even gradual changes that now accumulates to something that is different for you. Um, similarly, once a month, you should be doing a self-check skin cancer exam. So looking through your various different moles and freckles and bumps and all the things, just again, watching for those as they develop, seeing if you're seeing any major changes across the board. Once a year, ideally you're getting a comprehensive physical. Bonus, if you participate in the wellness program, you get a mini physical with us, right? You're getting your blood pressure with us. You're getting your body composition checked out. You're getting your cholesterol, your blood glucose, blood glucose. Oh, I added an extra oh, blood glucose. Thank you. We come out in March, so it would be a great idea to get your annual physical done in the fall, right? So you're getting a check-in every six months or so. so. Also, going to your doctor to get all that done so that you have an idea of what your numbers look like is always great. Depression screening within that. So if you're feeling any type of, it's more than just the blues, right? Depression can be pretty crippling, and depression is often accompanied with anxiety. I think most people deal with some level of anxiety, some level of depression. So understanding that that's okay and that's something that's great to get help with. And Every how do they do a depression screen? They ask a bunch of questions. It's a questionnaire. Yeah, yeah. It's a yes/no questionnaire, and if you answer yes to enough of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's an interesting thing. So I've dealt with depression, anxiety most of my whole life as well too, and. Sometimes they are great depression, like the questionnaire is like, yes, yes, no, no, no. But sometimes it's really just having a good relationship with your doctor and saying, trust me, this isn't my normal. This isn't, I can function at a higher level than this. I'm going to need a little bit of help in one thing or another. So every two to five years for these ladies in their 20s and 30s, hopefully getting that blood sugar test and eye exam, HBP test, your pap smear, very much so. Um, getting your cap done regularly, definitely, especially if you are sexually active. 
every five years for that cholesterol test test. And again, if you're sexually active, getting those STD tests done regularly. Now we get to our forties. And for those of us in our forties, we know this is the fun time. I love being in my forties personally. This is also where things really start happening <laughs> with our health. <laughs> like, yeah, here we go. All right, so mammograms. Hopefully every woman is getting a mammogram regularly at least by the age of 40, if not earlier. So I have a dear friend who is 39, who just had full breast cancer, full double mastectomy, full lumpectomy. Boom, right? Because she caught some funky tissue within her breast at the age of 35. So she was getting regularly tested and they caught it and they were able to act really quickly on it. But that is a big, big deal to go through. So please, please ladies, get your mammogram. It's not that bad. It's not that great either. You know, you're getting squished and you feel like a specimen. <laughs> I think at least. <laughs> But anyway, nobody laughs at that. Pretty guys. <laughs> <laughs> also, hopefully you're going to your dermatologist and getting a full body skin exam as well, too. So with note to your benefits guide, this is a specialty visit, but hopefully a copay or an FSA or an HSA can cover that cost. It is something that is highly recommended on an annual basis once you're the age of 40. So it's something that will be covered, but you may need to be a little bit dynamic with a referral or finding that specialty dermatologist. Talk to Lexi and Cheryl and they will help you and or the Alera group, which will also help you. Quite literally their job to answer those questions for you. So every two to five years, again, getting that cholesterol tested and then jumping in, we're looking at colon cancer screening. We're gonna talk a little bit more about colon cancer <laughs> screening later on. All right, once you hit your 50s, not only are you most likely perimenopausal or in your menopause, which is an adventure itself for the ladies, but also your risk for bone density issues pop up. So females are more at risk for osteoporosis than men. It's a big reason why we'd love for you to do your weight training, your resistance training, sprint training. So when you're lifting weights, you are ripping the muscles and then they bend, they, they repair stronger. The same thing actually for your bones is that you are stressing the bone and you're inviting it to recover stronger. So ladies, that's a big reason why we want to do some type of resistance training for that. Your thyroid panel is really important to do as well. So this is another one where I think of a, the quality of life with these preventative screenings. So if you are in your 50s and you're going through menopause and your thyroid is off, how awesome do you feel at three o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> right? Not, you don't feel awesome if your hormones are off and your thyroid is off. So things aren't quite working right. So make sure you're talking to your doctor with that. Getting that cardiac calcium scoring test, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that as well. And your hearing test done in your 50s and your 60s is really important. So I wear hearing aids. I am converted to the church of hearing aids. Get hearing aids earlier than later. So I've had hearing aids since I was two. So I have talked to a lot of people about getting hearing aids. So if your spouse or if your loved ones are saying, hey, I just talked to you and you didn't hear anything I said, listen to them. <laughs> Crazy, right? Hearing aids are a hard thing to adapt to, but they only get harder to adapt to. So get them as soon as you, oh no, as soon as you think about it. Technology loves me. So we'll see if it wants to click back in. Come on, maybe I can do it. No, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, see. Okay. All right. Then we're going to talk about the low dose lung CT scan as well, too, when we get over to the gentleman. All right, once you hit above 60, then you want to add in some dementia and Alzheimer's screening screenings as well, too, for the ladies. All right, for the gentlemen in your 20s and 30s, it's going to sound very, very similar. So we want that self-check skin cancer test. We want a testicular exam. Again, everybody's different. Know what your normal is and be aware of what your normal looks like. Once a year, we're looking for that full body comprehensive exam, depression, depression screening. And for the gentlemen, even in their 20s, getting a regular cancer screening for testicular cancer. So testicular and prostate cancer is very, very prevalent in men. We're gonna talk about that as well too. So getting that done with regularity is a really good thing. So 
getting your blood sugars, getting an eye exam, getting your cholesterol checked, all of that's really important. All right, when you hit your 40s, that's when the gentleman gets to go to the dermatologist as well. Cholesterol is another thing that's a little bit more prevalent than in men than in women. So if you have any type of a family history of high cholesterol, make sure you're on top of that. Really, it's, it's worth it. Cholesterol is another thing that with early detection, with lifestyle changes, you can most likely get that in check. <clears throat> then in their 50s, cholesterol check once a year. <clears throat> and then we're looking at that cardiac calcium scoring, as well as the low dose lung CT scan. Basically what those both are, are CT scans on the lungs and the heart. So we're just making sure that those muscles, those organs are working, that the air and the blood is flowing through those with regularity. So off the very bottom of the screen is the prostate specific, <clears throat> the PSA exam. So getting your prostate checked regularly is really important for men as well. We'll talk more about that too. <clears throat> Once you hit over 60, gentlemen, then we're going to add in some more love for your heart. So your abdominal aortic aneurysm or an AAH is in there as well too. So lots of fun. Grab a handout for your loved ones or anybody else. These are good exams to just be aware of. It's kind of nice to have it all in one place. All right, we're going to talk about skin cancer first. So we're going to talk about a bunch of different cancers. Skin cancer is the first one. Again, this is another one that's really good to catch early. Hopefully it minimizes the treatment. Really just think about when you're going out there for any type of sun exposure, any type of family history, all of that. Um, family history is a big one, even with skin cancer. So sometimes maybe we think skin cancer isn't maybe as big and scary as the other big cancers, but this is a big one and it adds to the family history toll. So when I was getting my mammogram, they asked me, what is your history of cancer? And I listed six different members of my family. And I said, this is pretty impressive, huh? Right, thinking that I was an outlier. And she said, that's probably the smallest list I've heard. People have way more than that. So think about your family history, think about that and that, how that increases your risk factor for different cancers that you can have. So here's kind of the, the system with, or the frequency, <laughs> yeah, see. frequency for your ages for when you should be getting that skin, those skin cancer tests done. So look at your age range and kind of figure that out in there. Next up, we've got colorectal cancer. What's colorectal cancer? Anybody know where that is? Good job. <laughs> Good job. So colon or rectum. So both of those, that is essentially the very lower end of your digestive tract. So as we think about our digestive tract, essentially, it is a sack where things are flowing through it, right? It's a tunnel, whatever kind of acronym you want to hear, kind of idea you want to give it. So if we develop polyps, which is what happens in colorectal cancer, we're essentially having speed bumps in the tunnel of our digestive system. So not only can that cause slowing, it can cause absolute delays, it can cause backups, it can cause pain, all of the above. So polyps can develop as a precursor to cancer within your colon and your rectum. So if you're having any type of funky happening down there, if you're having any type of pain, if you're, it's, it's really, you wanna be aware of that. Um, early detection is a big key for this one. One interesting thing with this one as well too, is that they, oops, I went the wrong direction. The risk goes up significantly after the age of 45. Um, so that's why colonoscopies are a joy, but they're recommended. <laughs> they are not necessarily fun, but they're recommended regularly. We talked a little bit about breast cancer as well too. So breast cancer is one thing that, there's a lot of women who have dealt with breast cancer. There's a lot of family history within that. And there are increased survival rates the earlier you catch breast cancer. So that one's a really important one to be on top of. So as we look at that, it really just dialed right into those mammograms. So every single year, I'm going to say this is two years, but ladies, I think we should be doing yearly for sure. After the age of 40, every year. Cervical cancer. Who knows where the cervix is? Nobody wants to say it but me. Hooray. Yay. Okay. <laughs> so the cervix is the lowermost part of the uterus. The cervix is internal and external. So cervix plays a major role with menstruation, with pregnancy, with fertility, and sterility. It plays a lot of, lot of jobs in there. So 
Um, one thing that's interesting to note with cervical cancer is that there are a lot of different types of cancer, right? And they can present in a lot of different ways. And I've actually, I have a few people in my life who initially thought they had cervical cancer, but it was a different type of cancer that presented there, which is interesting as well too. Um, there can be a correlation for ladies for cervical cancer and breast cancer, but not always necessarily. So making sure that you're doing those regular screenings um, to hopefully make it less invasive. So that pap smear is really important. Pap smear every three years, at least, if not more frequently. All right, testicular and prostate cancer. Hooray, where's your prostate, gentlemen? Anybody know? Um, uh huh, right up and in there. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, right there. there. <laughs> That's the official term. Uh, yeah, right up, up in, in there. there. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so it is below your, your prostate is below your bladder in front of your rectum, right? So right up and in there, exactly is right. So your prostate is a gland that produces fluid that houses semen and also protects the urethra as it's going, doing its job for releasing semen and urine as well too. So there is a very, very high rate of prostate cancer diagnoses in gentlemen very, very high rate. Also, there's a very high cure rate. There's also a very, oftentimes, there's not much to do with a prostate cancer diagnosis, but it is very good to be aware of it. Um, one thing that I think is really interesting, so as we think of the prostate, when you're in your 20s, gentlemen, your prostate is the size of a walnut. It is normal and healthy and expected for that to grow to the size of a lemon by the time you are in your 60s. That's interesting, right? So that gland that's at the bottom of your bladder behind your rectum or in front of your rectum is going from a walnut to a lemon over the course of your life from 20s to 60s. So being aware of that growth, which is normal and natural, and just make sure that you're getting regular PSA tests is really important. <clears throat> a PSA test isn't necessarily fun, <clears throat> but it's a blood work test. <clears throat> so you get a needle, poked into that gland to withdraw blood. And with that blood, they assess how much protein is in there. If there's too much protein, then there's an issue with the prostate. So, so they get also get a PSA, uh, PSA blood work from the blood exam, okay? Yes, but if there's an actual issue and they're actually going to oh. up stab in there. Yeah, right up in there. <laughs> I just got to be a little embarrassing across the board. I'm going to blush just a little. All right, so now what are you going to do? Hopefully, honestly, I kind of doubt that all of you have had all of your screenings done and you're just like, I'm good to go. Hopefully, all of you were like, yep, I need to do that one. So go ahead and scan this QR code. It takes you right to your benefits landing page. Uh, reach out to the Alera group. Reach out to Cheryl and or Lexi to find out how your benefits can support you in getting these screenings done. So if it's within your age range, it will be covered because a lot of these are the recommendations out there. And so being aware of that is really, really great. Yay, thanks everybody. Thanks for coming. Enjoy your sandwiches. Thank you. Thank you. Have fun. Make sure you work like this. Good job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Good job.